and welcome to this series of lessons on e-communication. In the last few lessons, we have looked at the internet and seen that one of its benefits is that it allows access to the World Wide Web. Today we will focus on the World Wide Web and, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to differentiate between the internet and the World Wide Web. Define some terminology associated with the World Wide Web and list services offered by the World Wide Web. Hi Dawn, that sounds so good. I've been wondering, what exactly is the World Wide Web? Well, Salai, the World Wide Web refers to a huge system of websites which together hold an amazing amount of information. You can use the web to do research for school projects, play games, download music, go shopping, book concert tickets and pay accounts. It's an amazingly useful tool and it has really changed the way we live. Okay, so what's the difference between the internet and the World Wide Web? Well, the internet is made up of a network of computers, cables and modems and everything you need to make a physical connection. The World Wide Web, on the other hand, refers to all the information that you can access. This information is found at certain locations called websites. Each website has its own address. Websites are stored on millions of computers all over the world. You connect to the web from your computer by using the physical connections of the internet and special software programs. Okay, so now I know the difference between the internet and the World Wide Web, but I'm still not sure how to get onto the web. Well, Salai, the best way to explain is to get onto it right now and explain as we go on. To access the World Wide Web from your computer, you need to be connected to the internet and you need a piece of software called a web browser. One example of a web browser is Internet Explorer. A web browser is a navigating tool with a window that displays an address bar. You need to type the address of the website you want to visit into the address bar and click on Go. This tells the software to connect you to the site you want. In this case, the software is connecting us to the Learn website. This first page which opens is called the home page. Every website is made up of a collection of web pages and the first page of all these websites is the website's home page. The home page gives information about the website. Every web page has its own unique address called an IP address. This is short for Internet Protocol. An IP address is a number that identifies each computer or device connected to the Internet. These addresses usually are made up of four sets of numbers, but new technology will have addresses with six sets of numbers. Let's have a look at Mindset Network's IP address. It is composed of four sets of numbers separated by a period like this. 196.7.33.1.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
or in a different color from the rest of the text on the web page. When you click on the hyperlink, the web browser automatically finds and displays the connected web page. When you mouse over a hyperlink, the mouse pointer changes to a hand which tells you that you are on a hyperlink. Pages in one website can also be connected to pages in a different but related website using hyperlinks. Can you see that when you move the mouse pointer over each option, it changes to a line? This means that this option is hyperlinked and when you click on it, the computer will display the web page you have selected. Yes, it is possible to find an amazing amount of information on the web. Yes, Eli. And people use the web for different things. Have a look at some of these users and see if you can identify what they are being used for. Some people use the World Wide Web for recreation and entertainment. They use it to read the latest news, get movie reviews and play games. The web can also be used to make bookings for travel, movies or plane tickets and even do banking. The web can be especially useful to do research for school projects and assignments or even just to increase and update your general knowledge. Yes Dawn, but I've also heard that the web can be used to listen to music and watch videos. You are quite right Salai. These media clips can be accessed from various web pages. But to do this, you will need software called a media player. You get many different kinds of media players like Real Player, Windows Media Player or QuickTime. These are usually installed on your computer or if they are not, they can be freely accessed from the web and stored on your computer. Whenever you transfer or copy a file from the web, we say that it has been downloaded. Downloading is very useful because once something is transferred to your computer, you can store it and access it there without having to connect to the internet each time you want to refer to it. Well, that is really amazing. But what else can you download? Well, Salai, so quite a range of things actually. For a start, you can download the information you need for your projects or assignments and of course the movies and music clips themselves. However, you have to be careful because some downloading is against copyright laws. Music companies, however, do allow you to download their products legally for a fee. You can also use the World Wide Web to download software updates for your software packages. These updates usually make your computer safer and faster and downloading them from the web saves you the trouble of having to go into the shops to get them on disk. Also remember, downloads are particularly important for antivirus programs. In the fast changing world we live in, new viruses appear all the time and antivirus programs have to be kept up to date to give you the best protection. The easiest way to make sure that you have the latest version of your software is by downloading free updates from the web. But you can use the web to download more than just software updates, for instance like ringtones and screensavers for cell phones. Of course you can, Salai. Some websites allow you to download free programs or trial versions of other applications like web browsers and games. It is these sites like download.com that let you download free ringtones for your cell phone, games, as well as screensavers. But be careful. Do not download files or programs from a site which you don't know. You could download a virus thinking it was a new game and you wouldn't know until it was too late. Mm, this is cool. So what else can you do? Well, the web also allows you to subscribe to a mailing list which allows you to receive regular newsletters 
and mail from other people on the list. These mailing lists are automatic distribution lists that bring people with similar interests together. Subscribing to a mailing list is usually free. News groups work in the same way as mailing lists. News groups or forums are online discussion groups for people with similar interests. When you send a message to the news group, it gets sent to the news server, which then posts your message on the web page for all the other members of the news group to read and reply to. You can also read messages in a forum without contributing to the discussion. This is called lurking. Although it sounds negative, lurking is often useful to get a feel for what the discussion is about before you join in. Then there's live chat, where you type in a message and somebody else online can immediately type a reply back. Wow, I've heard of that, but how does it work? Well, live chat has been made possible by IRC technology. IRC stands for Internet Relay Chat. This is another exciting service of the web, which allows you to send and receive messages in real time. Chatting in real time. Chatting in real time means that other people can read your message at the same time that you are typing it. So, using IRC, you can sort of have conversations with someone, even though you are thousands of miles apart. Mm, that would be cool to do. Yes, Eli, but be careful. Chat rooms can be dangerous too. Many people use code names to hide their real identities, and some criminals use the chat rooms to win the trust of their victims and then harm them in some way. Whoa, there are really amazing uses to the web. Yes, Eli, and because technology is advancing so quickly, you should constantly read up on new developments. As we speak, there could be several other uses for the web being discovered. Maybe you would be able to discover some on your own. <laughs> but here's your task for today. Write a short paragraph to make clear the difference between the internet and World Wide Web. List five services offered by the World Wide Web. List three new terms that you have learned and write your own definition for each of them. Thank you for joining us in this exciting lesson. Don't forget to visit our website for more information. See you next time when we will discuss how to find information on the World Wide Web. Goodbye.